Are we ignoring the g squared term in our potential? Yeah. Okay. We're saying that's small. It doesn't contribute. Um, well, it could contribute in higher order. Mm. You're absolutely right. Um, but this is already a order g squared. Yeah. So. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's a order g squared one. Yeah. So you see, this one is also order g squared because it's one here and one here. Mm. But these extra terms would be something like. <clears throat> um, one possibility would be this. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, where this, these aren't crossing, this is a vertex. So this would be g squared g g. So this would be g to the fourth. And then, and then also, how did we get, how did we get the first two diagrams? It seems like we're only using the first term in v to get those, right? Because that's what we basically have. The first two diagrams come from this. Okay. That's fine. But okay. this, I mean, these two diagrams then are just like electromagnetism. So I didn't bother to do them in detail. I'm thinking you're including that term here, though. Well, there's a two well, fermion photon vertex. Yeah. You got this thing. You got two vertices here. Okay. What would be an example for for the third diagram? Electron Which third? This, this is one the third here. diagram. Yeah. This is what we're doing. But I'm, I mean an example. You mean what physically could yeah, that physically. be? Yeah. Well, all of this is fermion, anti-fermion goes to two gauge bosons. So for example, we could be computing electron positron goes to W plus W minus. Because if we were doing that, <coughs> I have to take into consideration all the details of, of the electroweak theory. More simply, this could be QQ bar goes to two gluons. Mm -hmm. And um, you would then say that the two gluons would put for the, if you were doing proton and by proton scattering, there are three quarks in the proton, three anti-quarks in the anti-proton. So one quark and one anti-quark could do this and produce two gluons. Those two gluons would pick up um, UU bar and DD bar pairs and uh, hadronize, so to speak. And so you'd get a stream of Hadrons, mostly pions in this direction and pions in that direction. And that, those things are called jets. So let's see. Um, so we're Okay, well, if we refer to these formulas for the fields, we see that this thing is, this would be a g squared, by the way. g squared, product of root two e's. And then zero, the two a's, so let me just say, I'm just gonna call them a1 and a2, because we know that one carries k1 and index a, and Two carries K2 and index B. Um, and now we're going to have the equal the time order product. I'm going to leave this gauge field the way it is. 
But uh, this psi bar and the, and the psi and so forth, this is going to give us a V bar of Q and say S prime over the square root of 2 EQ. And then we're going to have a gamma mu and a TA and a U of P and S over square root of 2 EP. Now the fact, and, and we, let's see, we're saying that these are carrying in P pi QJ. So this is the Ji element of TA. Um, the fact, once you put in the J and the I, it doesn't matter where this TA is because this thing is a four spinner and acts on the gamma mu and the V bar all acts on the gamma mu from the other side. So this thing is done once you put it once you put in A, J, and I. Then you have e to the minus i p x1 and uh, e to the minus i q x1 and um, well, I think that's, that's enough of that. And then what's left here is F A B C D K A A lambda X two A capital B X two A lambda C X two. End of time ordering and just vacuum D fourth X one and D fourth X two. Okay. So now what I want to focus on is, is this structure here and uh, this one and that. So in other words, I want to look at square root of 2, uh, let's just call them E1 and E2, these are the energies of the final gauge bosons, 0A of K1 and uh, some spin index A, A of K2, this triple prime B, and now integral time ordered product AC mu x1 e to the minus i 2 plus p x1. And then I'm writing this F D E F because really these are this is an independent vertex and um, DK. AD lambda x2 A kappa E x2 A lambda F x2 E4 x1 E4 x2 Okay, so So this thing splits up into a into three different terms, really, depending upon which one has in which of these gauge fields has index C, because the one that has index C is the one that can form a time order product with with this AC, and then the other two are going to create the final state gauge bosons. And so this is the square root of 2e1, 2e2. Uh, 0, let me just call it a1 and a2 since we know what they are. e to the minus i q plus p x1. And time order product <coughs> ac mu x1. And now. I've got a big parenthesis here and I've got three terms. One term is FCEF DK Right, C is that index. DK AC lambda X2 AK E X2 A lambda F X2 and then there's an F D C F D kappa A 
a d lambda x2, a kappa c x2, a lambda f x2. And then there's a third term, f dec d kappa a d lambda x2, a kappa e x2, a lambda c x2. So there are these three terms, end of time ordering, vacuum, d4 of x1, d4 of x2. So now, here, you've basically got, the, well, in, the, in, the, in the, these two terms, you've simply got, I mean, after this one create, this one and this one is used to create, or are used to create the final state gauge bosons, you then have two gauge fields left over, and that gives you the propagator, which is the uh, mean value of the vacuum or the time order product of the two gauge fields, which give you that. And um, in the first case, you have the same thing, you just have an extra derivative. And um, so if we look at what the gauge fields are, they're just the creation operators and annihilation operators, the two pi's, the root 2e, polarization vector, and then this phase vector. And so, This whole thing then is uh, the two e's go away actually, and so we have e to the minus i q plus p x one, and then let me just see if I'm yeah this is really uh, okay big bracket. <coughs> First term is vacuum time ordered AC mu x1 d kappa A lambda C x2 vacuum. And now this remaining thing is F C A B, and I'm picking A and B um, because those are the labels for the final state gauge bosons. But now you can have in this case, you can have the A from here and the B from there, or the B from here and the A from there. But when you do that, what you get, let me, let's see, so I skipped this in the notes. What you get is an F C A B, and then you get the, the A from here, the A from here and the B from there. And so that means that you have epsilon star uh, k1, because it's k1 that goes with the a, epsilon star um, k2, and let's look at the indices. This one has a Lorentz index kappa and lambda, so this is kappa and lambda. So that's the first term, but then you also get fcba, Epsilon star, uh, now it would be uh, K1 lambda, Epsilon star, kappa K2. So you get those two terms. And you see this, because the structure constants are anti-symmetric, this is just minus that. So all together, what you have is this is parentheses, Epsilon kappa star of K1, lambda star of K2 minus epsilon lambda star of K1, epsilon kappa star of K2. All right, so that's, the, that's what happens to this. The other two are a little bit simpler because, but it's, it's the same sort of thing, AC mu, x1, but now we have a kappa c x2 vacuum. And now we have f a c b, and again, I'm going to take advantage of the anti-symmetry of the structure constants. And so what we get in this, oh, but 
in this term, we've got a derivative on this. So in, in, in this particular case, then, we have uh, a d by dx upper kappa, and that pulls down an, uh, an i k1 kappa. But, um, uh, let me just check the sign. Yes, sign is a plus, so the notes are actually So this gives us I K1 kappa epsilon star lambda K1 epsilon star upper lambda K2 and um, minus I K2 kappa epsilon star lambda K2 epsilon star couple lambda K1. And I must say I, at the moment, don't immediately remember. Oh, yes, yes. The point is that we're that in this term the lambdas are contracted. So if this guy goes into the propagator, these two guys produce the final state gauge bosons, and so you have the lambdas contracted. And then the last term is similar to this. It's zero time ordered product again, a C mu x1 a lambda c x2. Now it's f a b c of all things. And it's just like this, but now uh, this one is, is making the propagator. These two are making the final state gauge bosons. Um, but now it's lambda kappa. So this is I K1 kappa epsilon star lambda K1 epsilon upper kappa star K2 minus I K2 kappa epsilon lambda star K2 times epsilon star upper kappa of K1. And close this bracket, end of time order, e to the i, k1 plus k2, x, I have here x1, but that's wrong, it should be x2, e fourth x1, e fourth x2. Okay, well, um, let's see, we haven't gone through the quantization of the yang mills theory in detail. I'm going to try to do that on Monday. Uh, it's analogous to the quantization of the electromagnetic field, and one uses those uh, uh, functional integral tricks, which were first invented by two Russians, Badyev and Topol. Were you going to say something? Um, <clears throat> oh, never mind. Nope. Got it. The first line was where the derivative was acting on it. If you say so. Well, I mean, I, if you want to ask a question, do. But I, I, no. I don't even know what you mean by the first line. Okay. So, up here. This d, this derivative acts right like that. And that's the one that pairs with the other a mu in the propagator, right? In the first case, yes, because I. Deliberately, I chose this index to be C. Right. And so then I have an option of 
they have D, E, F here, one of them is going to be C, and the other two can't be C, mm -hmm. and they have to be A and B. Or they can be A, B, or B, A, and that's why we get two terms. So it's, um, it's complicated. Um, I was working this out for, from scratch yesterday. And uh, when I first wrote down all these terms, I said, my God, I hadn't done one of these in a while. So. Anyway, so we're going to have the following uh, conditions. We're going to say that k mu, epsilon mu of k, and here I mean k mu, k, k1 or k2 is zero. And uh, we're also going to be saying that epsilon lambda, epsilon lambda star is <laughs> does he care about physics? Now he does. <laughs> dedicated as well. Okay. Um, this, I want the space part to give us a one. Heston has a minus one, so this is minus one. All right. So now, I am three is equal to g squared v bar q s prime gamma mu u of p and s, and now this integral, and it'll be e to the minus i q plus p x one plus i k one plus k two x two. T C J I D four x one D four x two, and now I have to put in the gauge boson propagator, which is to say we've got this term occurring three time, times, but one of them has a derivative on it, and so this is. Let me see if I can think of another index here. We've got PQ, and I use Q prime. Um, well, why don't I just follow the notes? Q prime. I, we've got K already used. So this is Q prime squared plus I epsilon. And again, this is a tree level diagram. The I epsilon is a good matter. There's a minus I e to the minus i q prime x1 minus x2. And because q prime occurs only as a square, it doesn't really matter which one we use it. OK. Now, the derivative is a derivative with respect of the kappa derivative on the x2. And that then pulls down a plus i Q prime kappa. So we've got I Q prime kappa. And then we have F C A B. And then we have this um, anti-symmetric structure here. Lambda star K2 minus lambda star K1 kappa star K2. But um, there's an eta. And what's the eta doing? Well, the eta will be a mu lambda. So it'll be an eta mu lambda. And then we have plus FACD. And now these two things are the same. So we just have I K1 minus K2 kappa. And, um, but it's epsilon star K1, epsilon lambda star K2. And now what we've got is 
a, a mu with a kappa. So instead of being an eta, because one is raised, this is delta kappa mu. And the third term is F, A, B, C of all things. And once again, the lambda is raised, and so it's delta. Delta lambda mu. And now it's this structure here, and that is, um, I'm just going to re just write it K1 kappa epsilon small lambda. K1 epsilon kappa star K2 minus I K2 kappa epsilon star lambda K2 epsilon star kappa K1. All right, and Okay, so that's the whole nine yards there. And now, as usual, if you do say the either the x1 or the x2 integration, you're going to let's do the uh, say x1 integration. The x1 integration will tell you the q prime has to be q plus p, and that's what you can see. So instead of redoing the, instead of going down there, I'll just redo the diagram. This is carrying P, this is carrying Q, so this line has to carry Q P plus Q. I mean, it's not surprising even. It comes out from the integration. Um, then the other d fourth x integration gives just gives you two pi to the fourth delta of energy conservation. All the root two e's of cancel. And so we've got I M3, and M3 just means that it's diagram 3. P e squared G bar um, QS prime gamma giving U PS PCJI 2 pi to the fourth delta of P plus Q minus K1 minus K2. The propagator gives P plus Q squared in the denominator. And now we have this term that it multiplies. And so um, Q prime is, um, it turns out Q prime is minus P minus Q. Anyway, so this is F. CAB minus Q minus P kappa times epsilon kappa star K1 epsilon lambda star, oh, I better hurry up, K2 minus epsilon lambda star K1 epsilon kappa K2 star. A to mu lambda, and then plus F A C B K1 minus K2 kappa epsilon lambda star K1 epsilon lambda star K2 delta kappa mu, and then F A B C K1 kappa epsilon kappa star K2, epsilon star mu K1 minus kappa 2 mu, epsilon K star K1, epsilon mu star K2. Okay, so that's the whole thing. So I incorporated one of the deltas there. If if I were to do this delta, then this kappa would be a mu. And so I can just do that and get rid of this one. And um, 
there's a mu lambda there. Um, and uh, we're summing over lambda, so basically I'm just lowering this lambda and making it a mu. <coughs> get rid of this one, so that simplifies that. All right, the, um, the upshot now is that um, let's see if I've already simplified. Oh, this by energy momentum conservation minus Q minus P is the same thing as minus K1 minus K2. And so this is minus k1 minus k2 sub kappa. So let me just stick that in there. That's because all this is multiplied by this delta function. And now we have some nice cancellation, namely the k1 can't, um, the k1 gives zero when contracted with this epsilon. So only epsilon 2 survives there. And then over here, the K2 cancels, but epsilon 1, but the K1 survives. And um, so what one has is 2 pi to the fourth delta of, say, K1 plus K2 minus P minus Q, um, G squared let me just abbreviate it as V bar gamma mu U T C J I over Q plus P squared. And now this thing is um, minus F A B C Well, let me let me let me go let me let me drop down a little bit. This A, the, the FABC, this is FABC, this one has a minus sign in it. And so if we pull out the FABC, then what we get is minus two. And in fact, what happens is this term and that term give exactly the same uh, value. Um, in other, and what we get then is minus 2 k2 dot epsilon star of k1 times epsilon mu star of k2 plus 2 k1 dot epsilon star of k2 epsilon mu star of k1 and then we get minus k1 minus k2 mu epsilon star k1 dot epsilon star k2. So that's one. That's the final result, at least at this stage. And then you have to add this to the first two magnitudes, which I called m i m12. And um, then you see what you want to do. If you want to get a cross section, you have to basically square the thing and then you decide uh, whether you're going to be summing over initial and final spins and, um, and so forth. So the question is, well, do you want to do this every time? Of course you don't. And so uh, there are the uh, Feynman rules which are quoted in, um, in Peskin. And uh, so the question is, how do you get the right, the same answer if you're doing the Feynman rules? Well, it, it, it turns out it's only three lines, which is why uh, So the Feynman rules would tell you this. They say the vertex I, G, V bar of Q has a gamma mu U P S T D say J I. So I'm doing the Feynman rules. Then the propagator would be minus I eta mu rho over P plus Q squared, and that's because 
we have P going in, Q going in, and then uh, K1A, K2B, and then K3C, and uh, I think I have, well, I don't remember the arrows now on the diagram, but. It's over here. Yeah, and I've got them written down. Okay, so they're all going out. Good choice. Okay. So one gets that. The rest of the proper data is delta CD because the, the flavor or color indices have to be the same. And then the vertex. And the final rule for the vertex is FABC. Eta sigma tau minus K1 plus K2 rho plus eta tau rho minus K2 minus K1 minus K2 sigma uh, plus eta rho sigma K1 plus K2 plus K1 tau epsilon sigma star K1 epsilon star tau Right. What does the choice for the orientation of the arrows on the gauge boson determine in this expression? You, you, so you, what know, I, you know what's coming in. I, J. But these things are their own anti one so can I just flip the arrow at will? And like, What does that affect? The arrow says what, what the direction of momentum is. And normally this is K1 going out, K2 going out. But this one... No, I see. We're this not. one means that K3 here, K3 is minus P minus Q because it's pointing this way. I see. These aren't like the arrows on the fermion lines. That is, they're not telling me particle antiparticle. They're just telling me the direction of momentum. They're telling you the direction of momentum. Okay. Right. All right. Clearly, uh, if we make the D a C, then um, this simplifies to 2 pi to the fourth, the overall delta G squared, B bar down to mu U, T C J I, and A B C over T plus Q squared. So it's the, right, okay. Now, what about all these other terms. Well, what we have then is eta sigma tau, and this is, well, K2 minus K1 mu. I'm using the A, I'm using this delta and that eta. And then minus delta tau mu, K1 plus 2K2 plus delta sigma mu, 2k1 plus k2 tau, all that times epsilon sigma k1 star epsilon tau star k2. OK, well, um, indeed, this then, uh, after you contract it, gives you that. So it, it works. Um, let's see, in a few minutes left, let me try to answer some. Oh, I've got to, you guys, well, let's see, we've got to give out, we have these goddamn idea forms. And um, because of the financial crisis, the pencils that they supply us with, instead of being full length, they're about three inches long. So you stole all these? I got these from the uh, front office. It's supposed to be number two. There's a lot of regular size pencils in there. Yeah, that's true. That's that's I from. <laughs> that's All right, if you guys want these, oh. I don't know what you want, but I got it. Like, who wants a pencil? Sweet. It's not cool. 
get one here. All right, now, have students fill out a of this survey with my name, boss number. Oh, that's your name. Is that my name? Your name. You guys know how to do this. Right? Yeah. All right, so let me pass the hand now. And now, okay, unfortunately, the TA isn't. Okay, here's the mailing envelope. So somebody has to mail these back. They're dropping off in the front office. Yeah, you can never that's the other possibility. You can just drop them off in the mailbox in the front office. You can always slip it under the door and they'll figure it out. Let me see. I'm never here when it's open. I'm looking for somebody who doesn't have a backpack. I don't know what that would Huh? What about you? You don't have a backpack. All right, all right. <laughs> and this goes in there. Okay. <laughs> so that I can put it in my bag and forget it. All right, so um, just, just, so we'll, we'll meet then um, Monday at 5.30. And um, I, let, let me actually ask you guys what you want. Do you, would, you, would, you, would you want me to do the Fadiyev drop-off, which is to say the how it is that um, you do gauge fixing in the Van Mills theory, which is a generalization of how you do it at the, 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 the uh, electrodynamics, but it has a new wrinkle and it gives something called ghosts. Do you want that, or would you rather that I give you a qualitative description of the standard model and QCD? Ghosts and Fideos, Fideos pop up. All right, that's what I had intended, but I just thought I'd make sure. All right, so you guys um, see you Monday. So you can you can click it all.